Okay, this is the second tutorial in this series that I'm putting out for the Blender Game Engine Python programming tutorial. You should be familiar with Python programming, and if not, uh, one of the ways to do it, you, you can watch my Python programming, programming tutorials that I did for Blender Render. And even though that's BPY dot stuff versus BGE type stuff, it's still Python programming, and a lot of it still applies. What's different is that the commands in here are different than the commands within Blender Render. So for instance, in Blender Render things start with BPY versus in here things are BGE. And in the last lesson we positioned a cube with this local position dot command. Well that's not the way you do it within Blender Python, but you can check out that set of tutorials if you're not familiar with Python because I won't be teaching Python so much in here as I will just how to use the game engine and we'll do a little bit of Python but most of the Python code programming is taught in that series and uh, let's see so let's just keep going in here now notice in this last lesson see this line here the scene I said the scene is equal to bge.logic.getCurrentScene well we didn't use anything the you know used scene in here see I used cube object up here but I didn't use scene so really we didn't need that command so if you want to comment something that you just put a pound sign right at the front of it turns it green so that really didn't apply alright so now if I want to let's do something else it is I just come down here backspace to there and up oh, moves that over I gotta make sure that this if statement is right on here. Now if you're not familiar with if statements, but though you should be from the other Python, you know, make sure you terminate it with a colon at the end of the line. And then this gets indented by a tab and then the location. So this could just have also been dot z or input there's uh, also uh you could use kx input active and there's another one called kx input just activated. But we'll just use this for now. Let's see, we want to do something else. Let's go grab some spare code that I have in the other file right here. Where there's a force. Where is it? Right here. These are these are great events. Alright, so but now in, instead of using uh, this like this, I'm gonna copy some code and paste it right into here. I don't need this extra line now, like this. Get rid of that line. And instead now, I have another command called apply rotation. But of course, the name is not player, it is cube object. Like that. And then let's put another something in the scene. Let's put a, let's add a cylinder to the scene. We'll give it a color. Like that. Maybe we're going to rotate this on the x axis. Alright, so we're going to do a couple things. We'll. And this, and we're going to take care of this little command right here. So I'll show you what it does. So this is also, we'll, we'll try this with the down arrow key. So now down arrow key. And now we say, if the down arrow key is pressed, still, and we're still within this main function, this is all basically, you know, sometimes I'll do this, I'll put a line that says end of main function, or you could say end of main method, like that. And then I know that all this stuff is within main. So when main is running, it's saying it's looking for the up arrow key, it's looking for the down arrow key. In this case, it says an apply rotation. And notice this format. It basically puts x, y, and z rotation values in square brackets. And then there's a comma and then true. And true is for local. And I'll show you what that is. That is, well, you should be completely familiar with that from all my other lessons. That's for the local axis. So you're rotating on the local axis instead of the global axis. So let's try it. We'll try it in a couple cases, but let's also copy this. Uh, let's, I'll show you how. There's a couple ways to do it. One, we could actually go get this object within the scene, but sometimes what I'll do is just to keep it, you know, just so you see, for, we're just keeping it simple from the beginning. I'll call this file 
cube object and it's associated with this cube object all right and then I'm gonna go copy this whole thing I don't need to do this because there's a way you can go get this object this cylinder by name but we won't do that yet but so sometimes what I'll do is I'll create another file and maybe I want everything associated with the cylinder object to do its own thing and so with it here I'll just paste all that same code and then the name of this controller owner instead I'm going to change it up here to keep it consistent cylinder object and then this is going to be cylinder object and that is cylinder object and then what's the other thing we're just practicing and then what's the other thing we need to do yes we need to go into the logic brick for that as well we'll zoom in I press control up arrow key we add an always sensor press that make sure it's depressed we add Python uh, controller and we get that Python code called cylinder object there and we make sure it's connected okay then we go back up and then back into the scripting mode okay so now this cylinder object is associated with this code called cylinder object and this is associated with this code called you pick it over here cube object like that alright so in one case this one is going to move the cube by one and and rotate it let's do let's just make this a much smaller number in case I press that keyboard too many times 0.01 like that and then notice this rotation value this is a pretty small rotation value you have to remember rotation values here uh, we'll, we'll get to but uh, typically we work in radians instead of degrees that's what a lot of the math commands are written in or is in radians and if you're not familiar with radians you should definitely go check out my video on YouTube and you could just type in just like it's called just what is a radian alright and that way you get that down to a science and because it's just another angle of measure like degrees but that video will definitely clear it up because I'll use radians all the time and um, so we're rotating this if the down arrow key is pressed and then in the cylinder routine we'll do the same thing we'll just we'll do this on Z we'll do for Z we'll raise it up by a small amount 0 0.01 like that and we'll also rotate it by a small amount alright so let's go over here and run our code and see what happens alright that one's falling to the ground and notice that the yellow the cylinder didn't fall because well, let me stop that for a minute because we didn't set that as a as a rigid body in the first place it's just set oops I've got to be back in game engine it's still set by default static alright so it, it's not going to move here alright so I press P alright so now when I press the up arrow key the cube should move a little bit and it should also rotate a little bit let's see oh no oh I got them both wrong let me have out the down arrow key that's the up arrow key alright so that's moving up we can't tell if that cylinder is rotating because I've rotated it on cylinder object let's rotate it on Y and then let me see what I goofed up in the cube object code I said up arrow key and right arrow key did I get it wrong cube object there's in the cube object so it's the down arrow key that's also has the down arrow key and associated with that and the cylinder has the up arrow key ply rotation okay should be working but I didn't see it okay let's see let's try it again alright so the up arrow key moving it up is it rotating it all right let's try let's maybe you just can't see it so let's just comment that out real quick and we'll make it we'll give it a greater rotation all right let's see here now what happens for the cylinder okay there goes the cylinder rotating like that so I guess I wasn't giving it enough rotation and then the cube will do the same thing to that 
and we'll make that 0.5. I copied this from some other code, but it would maybe be my tank and alien code. And oh, maybe that was for when I was moving the turrets on the tank, and I was moving it in really small angles that I copied in for some reason. I forget that was some time ago. So then, and we'll uh, we'll just move this barely like that. Okay. So now we press P. Now they should both be going. Oh, so we comment it up and then down. Oh, uh, the cube. I think the cube is probably getting. The cube must be interfering with the ground here. So let's just turn this into a uh, static object just for a second until I deal with it. For again, all right, let's do it again down. Now the cube is working. I mean, the cylinder is rotating. Why is the cube not working? You know how it goes, right? It's always programmer error. So what did I do wrong? So this is in the cube object. Cube object. I call a cube object that's associated with that. And unless I accidentally, <laughs> let's see, game logic for the cube. It's called cube object. Oh. I had the pulse set wrong in here for some reason. I must have gone in and was goofing around with it. Okay, back to the scripting window. Now, when I press it, there they go, on oh, the down arrow key like that. All right, so yeah, I was in there goofing around earlier. <coughs> Forgot to set that pulse back on there. All right, so there they go. All right, well, so that gives you, that should give you an idea. So now you have two commands to play with, right? And uh, that's on the local axis. If let's just do one thing, let's just change. See, since this is rotating on Z on the local axis, let's see what the local axis is doing. Let's see, local is local there so it's rotating it on Z like that let's just press P and let's see if it, see it's rotating like that but if I was to do this one thing real quick and just say false E like this then it should rotate it on the global axis so we'd have to look at the global axis now Z is pointing up now when we run the other thing and there you see it's rotating that way alright so the that makes a huge difference to your code. All right, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.